So I just want to jump in. So I'm going to start by just reading Genesis chapter uh, 6, verse 4. Let's do it. This is the scripture that, you know, everybody's quoting. And uh, before I read the scripture, I was at a, a massive conference, and it was full of lead pastors. And I had one pastor in particular come up to me. And it's funny because, you know, when you do these videos about demons, deliverance, generational curses, Nephilim, there are people who be like, oh, yeah, that, that's the, the weird guy. You know, like I had a video go viral with a renowned astrophysicist talking about aliens, yeah. you know, so it's like, oh, I'm the pastor that talks about aliens. But but I want to encourage you because this encouraged me. This guy came up to me. He's like, listen, I'm a lead pastor and there there are very few resources where you can get good, sound, doctrinally sound, you know, theologically sound information. Right. And he was like, the fact that you're willing to talk about the Nephilim, yeah. the fact that you're willing to talk, he was like, I just cherish that that's rare to me. Yeah. So I just wanted to shout you out because yeah, we've been doing the, we've been doing the same thing in the Bronx, you know, um, some of the more um, extra biblical topics uh, without straying off away from uh, Christian orthodoxy. I find that the body of Christ is hungry to learn those things. Yes. Hmm. The body of Christ is hungry to learn those things. Extra biblical text. So, um, as I've as I've shown you before, Alexander Pagani, Mike Signorelli, are not legitimate teachers of the gospel or sound. Bible exegetical teachers. They make up things to tickle itching ears. This Mike Signorelli, um, let me go back here and remind you what he, you know, he just talked about a pastor who was so glad that Mike Signorelli is willing to talk about these extra biblical issues. So let's, let me go remind you. Here's Mike Signorelli who now is not involved with uh, Daniel Adams because Daniel Adams is fellowshipping with Lovi Elias, who is the spiritual son of Prophet Passion Java, who practices what they consider divination or witchcraft, opening the third eye, etc. And this man, who's supposedly a demon expert, can't recognize what spirit is at work in Daniel Adams can't recognize the spirit at work in Greg Locke. So now there is a split. Salvador, Pagani, and Signorelli are now split from Daniel Adams, Marcus Rogers, Lovi Elias, and it seems like Greg Locke. But this is the man who has such regard for pastors in America that he says stuff like this. By the way, you know, if you're not in a head-on collision with the devil, it's because... You're Oh, let me both running in the same direction. And right here, he's at Global Vision Bible Church. He's at Global Vision Bible Church for New Year's Eve, New Year's Day, running in the same direction with people who are now running in the same direction with people who are practicing occult and witchcraft practices. Okay, but what does he say about American pastors? <laughs> and <laughs> I'm feeling spicy on the new year today. <laughs> the reason why most pastors in America don't cast out demons is because they're working in conjunction with them. And yeah, you can't you can't make this up. And <laughs> I'm feeling spicy on the new year today. <laughs> the reason why most pastors in America don't cast out demons is because they're working in conjunction with them. And, and so my story actually goes way back. I was. Uh, That's sick. That is sick. That's saddening, y'all. So if we look right here at 1 Corinthians chapter. Oh. Uh, Four, no. Right here, we not we need to look at First Corinthians chapter four, verse six. Paul said, "I have applied all these things to myself and Apollos for your benefit, brothers, that ye may learn by us not to go beyond what is written, and that none of you may be puffed up in favor of one 
against another. All these things are accomplished through not going beyond what is written. Amen. Okay, let's continue on with another scripture here. Uh, Revelation 22, 18 and 19. It says, I warn you, I warn everyone who hears the word of this prophecy of this scroll. Um, if anyone adds anything to them, God will add to that person the plagues that are described in this scroll. And if anyone takes words away from the scroll of this prophecy, God will take away from that person any share, any share in the tree of life and in the Holy Spirit city, which are described in this scroll. Deuteronomy 4, 2, do not add, look right here, right next to me. Do not add to what I command you and do not subtract from it. But keep the commands of the Lord your God that I give you. Number four here. That's a proverb 36. 30 and verse 6. Do not add to his words or he will rebuke, rebuke, you, rebuke you and reprove you a liar. Deuteronomy 29, 29. The secret things, the things you don't know. The secret things belong to the Lord our God. But the things that are revealed belong to us and to our children forever, that we may do all the words of the command of words of his law of this law. The warning, these warnings caution against adding or subtracting from the word of God and emphasize the importance of sticking to what is written in the Bible. They remind us to be humble in our interpretation of scripture and to avoid adding our own opinions or traditions to the word of God. And that's what the Pharisees were rebuked by Jesus for doing. Okay, so now we're going to get into um, this video that is on Alexander Pagani's channel and probably on Mike Signorelli's channel. And ask yourself from what you just heard in the scriptures, uh, are you going beyond what is written? The title of this video is The Origin of the Nephilim. You know, so not only do we talk about like the Nephilim in our church, right now, the Wednesday night Bible studies right now, as a matter of fact, yesterday, we're teaching on the pre-Adamite race. Come on. You know, now we, you know, let's just, let's just establish this here. You know, this is a non-salvation topic. It's non-salvific. So whether the church uh, chooses to believe there was a, a pre-Adamite race before Adam and Eve, it has no bearings on salvation. It's yeah. just well, not according to the book of Revelation. It says anyone who adds to or takes away from the prophecy of this book. And you can think that means merely the book of Revelation. But there might be a reason why that book is the conclusion of Scripture for any Orthodox Christianity. So you might just be giving people an assurance that the Bible doesn't give. It's a great dialogue to just explore in Scripture. But not only that, we've been exploring other topics, flat earth theory, yeah. you know, uh, portals and dimensions, and yeah, yeah, yeah. parallel universe, multi-universe, all of that stuff. And you'd be surprised. Okay, so they're delving into flat earth parallel universes, dimensions, portals. Um, the question is, are you going beyond what is written to delve into this? Are you using your imagination? And we've already, we've got a... We've got a whole host of people right now who are... Uh, talking about trips to heaven, trips to hell, all of these inordinate doctrines, extra biblical doctrines. Um, Paul went to the third heaven and he said <laughs> he heard and saw things that was not permitted to be spoken of. But we got people talking. We have people literally talking about, um, you know, what do you call it? Uh, out of body experiences, uh, talking about traveling from place to teleporting from place to place in the spirit. Uh, and this is not, <laughs> this is not helping that problem whatsoever. I call this 
demonic grooming. Because when you start introducing things that people want to hear, you start fulfilling the scripture that says first Tim or second Timothy chapter four verse beginning of verse one, it says, I charge thee therefore before God and the Lord Jesus Christ, who shall judge the quick and the dead at the, at his appearing and his kingdom preach the word, be instant in season and out of season, reprove, rebuke, exhort with all long suffering and doctrine for the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine. In other words, what is written, but after their own lusts shall they heap up to themselves teachers having itching ears and they shall turn away their ears from the truth. The truth is what is written. What is revealed is for us, but the hidden things, those are for God. And shall be turned unto fables or story making. But watch thou in all things, endure inflictions, do the work of an evangelist, and make full proof of thy ministry. So they're fulfilling what is written, what is prophetically written of in Scripture. They are changing the message, altering the message to suit the appetites of the goats rather than the needs of of the sheep. I call this demonic grooming. Is that um, there could be at least some biblical premise for some of those topics if yeah. we would explore them. Especially, yeah. like, let's look at one, like the whole idea of beam me up Scotty, the whole right. idea of right. translation. Well, we know Philip right. did that. Philip, yeah. He was in one city and the Bible says he was... Philip didn't do that. If it happened, it happened in the power of God. God did that. This is trying to make it sound as if Philip conjured up the ability to translate himself or teleport himself from one place to the other. Look, we got a severe problem in this world and in this nation called the United States. Well, all nations with mental illness, getting people off of sound, clearly revealed doctrine and into fables and superstitions and mysteries and possibilities. That's not, that's not what a man of God is to do here to preach the word and not groom people for doctrines of devils, false teaching. This is grooming for false teaching to contradict scripture. Translated into yeah. another city instantly. So we know that right there, that was a deconstruction of matter. Yes. You know, uh, all the light photons and all of that. And then just reappearance of somewhere else yes. in another city. So we know that it is at least biblically possible. Yes. It's I love possible. these topics. <laughs> well, I mean, where's Enoch? Right. Where is he? Right. Where's Elijah? Come on. You know, I mean, th this is physical matter. Right. That there was. This is not our business. <laughs> this is not. This is not kingdom man business. This is not taught in doctrine. Enoch walked with God and then God took him, the Bible says. Elijah was taken up into heaven by a chariots of fire in a, in a whirlwind. So these things happen to Elijah. They're not prescriptive. They're descriptive. But you start getting into this, you start opening doors this is opening doors for abhorrent doctrine that does not come from sound biblical doctrine there was an ascension here's right. something i preached the other week jesus christ bodily ascended which means there is a human being with the dna of mary's lineage come on in, oh. seated at the right hand of the father uh -huh. a human yep i mean 100 percent gone okay this is not true this is not even biblical when Christ was resurrected, he was resurrected with a resurrection body. It says in Corinthians in a place, what is planted is perishable. What is raised is imperishable. What is planted is corrupt, not Christ. Christ was never corrupt. But as far as us, the corruption must be planted that the incorruptible may be raised. Okay. That's our resurrection. But he was raised with a incorruptible and imperishable eternal body he was not he did not have a human body because you didn't see him walking through going through doors that were locked before he had a resurrected body 
You didn't see him, um, you know, doing the things he did or even ascending, you know, with the mortal body. You saw that happen in the resurrected, imperishable, incorruptible body. Whew. That's what I'm saying. He doesn't have the blood no more. Because it was spilt for our sin. Yeah. But you could still put your fingers in his holes and in his sides. So it's flesh and bone. Yes. Fully walking, capable on the earth. The same body, the same Jesus. Yeah. So um, so I guess. Okay. So again, um, he was he was not raised a spirit. He was raised in bodily form that you could touch and put your hands, fingers in the holes of his hands and reach into his side. That's true. Okay. But it wasn't the same body. Okay, it was an imperishable, incorruptible, eternal body. I guess the question we would have to ask is, when was there? Oh, also, he was talking about walking around with the DNA of Mary. Um, they make some things here that go beyond scripture, but there's also some some cause for some pause because they basically make it like the Holy Spirit used an egg of Mary to conceive Jesus. And though we know the blood of Mary, since he was in her womb as an infant, her blood would have flowed through him. Um, you know, all the different chemicals and the nutrients would have flowed from her in the embryonic sac. But there's nowhere in the scripture where it says God took Mary's egg and essentially impregnated Mary. And in other words, because there was DNA, there was physical DNA, which would have made Christ's flesh the same as the rest of our flesh. I'm just saying the baby in her womb was conceived by the Holy Spirit. And I don't think that God needed an egg of Mary or any part of her reproductive system except her womb to produce the immaculate conception. A shifting on his way up in his ascension. Right. Because yeah, when love he was this. on the earth, it was physical. Yeah. By the time he got to heaven, something shifted. So we yes. know that there's like, an, like so yeah, man. Like, this is where you all, get into some interdimensional yeah. Uh, yeah. crazy stuff. Yeah. I love this. Uh -huh. And that's my point is right. when crazy people talk about crazy things, they're crazy. Right. But when 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 people who really have a level of um, intellectual you know prowess and you right. kind of have that, and then you talk about some fringe items, right. it's like, man, that's exciting. And that was the feedback I got. Right. This guy was like, you know what? You're a legitimate lead pastor. Right. You're building a thriving multi side I would disagree. I would disagree that he's a legitimate lead pastor. He may be in a pastoral role, but this is a, um, what did I hear? This is an enterprise. This is an enterprise just with the false demon slayer doctrine that everything is a demon, anything, demon, demon of fear, bedwetting demon, um, farting demons. I mean, everything is literally a spirit, you know? it's so extra extra out of out of the ordinary that you would give rise to every sin being caused by demons nothing being caused by your flesh it's just if that wasn't enough there's a lot of other just convoluted false teachings and then you add to it look there's nothing wrong with having you know look you should we should look at the bible with reverence and awe of the things god has done and is capable of but we we don't want to start letting our imaginations run wild with us, and that's what these people are guilty of, point blank and period. Side church, as you have planted insanity right. amount of churches, right. and, and so you have the leadership chops, you know the word, but you're not afraid to talk about fringe stuff. Right. Yeah, the, <laughs> I think you can't look at the scriptures I already read off and think that we have a license to talk about fringe stuff, to, to, to teach fringe doctrine. And that's what's rare. Right. And so that's why I'm excited. It's not supposed to be rare. It's supposed to be non-existent to, to speculate, speculate on things that the Bible doesn't reveal and then actually make up words for things that the Bible doesn't have anything to say about. They're going to mention that here in a minute. Excited about this. By the way, if you want to talk about pre Adamite, or as Derek Prince said, pre Adamic, that yeah. was his thing. I, right. I'm down. Uh, you know, I got, a matter of fact, I've introduced a lot of people. Vlad See, but to put this in the public square, 
even to offer this as a possibility and then have people chase a rabbit hole. You, I mean, you're going away from sound doctrine. You're, you're, you're distracting people. What did Paul say? He says, you know, I'm, I'm concerned about you in the Corinthian church, second Corinthians verses 11, that just as the serpent deceived Eve by his cunning and craftiness, your hearts will be led astray from a pure and sincere devotion to Christ. This doesn't, this doesn't move people towards that pure and simple devotion to Christ. It distracts people. It's a diversion. It's a grooming tactic for other inordinate and abhorrent doctrines. It's demonic grooming going on. Vlad, if he's, if Pastor Vlad's watching, I can't see the comments, you know, because we reconfigured the cameras, but uh, I introduced him to the Finnis Dake commentary, uh -huh. you know, because there's so many people who've never heard of the Dake annotated Bible. Uh -huh. And so I've got a lot of guys on that. Shout out to Sean Cannell if you're watching right now. The whole crew of guys. That really bothered me to hear this man. <laughs> Shout out Sean Cannell because he's a YouTube guy. He's in, in deep with YouTube. I've always wondered why it seemed like some people get shadow banned and false teachers are in the inner circle of um, people who are in the inner circle with you two might be saying something there. So this doctrine he just talked about, I don't think it's accepted by any legitimate um, ministry. You're a legitimate lead pastor. Right. You're building a thriving multi-site church as you have planted insanity right. amount of churches. Right. And and so you have the leadership chops. You know the word, but you're not afraid to talk about fringe stuff. Right. And that's what's rare. Right. And so that's why I'm excited about this. By the way, if you want to talk about pre-Adamite or as <laughs> Derek Prince said, pre-Adamic, that yeah. was his thing. I, right. I'm down. Uh, you know, I got, a matter of fact, I've introduced a lot of people. Vlad, if he's, if Pastor Vlad's watching, I can't see the comments, you know, because we reconfigured the cameras, but uh, I introduced him to the Finnish date commentary, uh -huh. you know, because there's so many people who've never heard of the date annotated Bible. Uh -huh. And so I've got a lot of guys on that. Shout out to Sean Cannell, if you're watching right now, the whole crew of guys ordering the, and, and, you know, if you read the Finnish day commentary, like Genesis one, one and one, two, right. Why was the earth good? And then verse two, it's without form and void. Come on. Something happened, right. You know, and then. Okay. Why, why did something happen? Why is it not still good? Because it's, it's without form and void. You, you're making an assumption of the text. Everything God created was good. The formlessness and the void, the Holy spirit came and hovered over the waters. Right. And, and spoke um, order to chaos. Yeah, there's a lot of... This is in the first four and a half minutes of this video. We're not going to watch the whole thing. But, you know, because it says one thing, why does that contradict another? Scripture doesn't contradict itself. It's harmonized. This is, this is really where it goes off the rails, y'all. Before the flood of Noah, there's another flood, right? You know, so could it be Lucifer's flood? Uh, I love that. Yes, I'm in. I'm in. Come on. And you know, Derek Prince, that was, and he went on record by saying that's who he, that's what he thought demons were. You know, I just recently found that out about Derek Prince. Yeah. About um, that how he upheld at least what we would say some of the more conspiratorial topics of yeah. the scripture, and I upheld some of the more conspiratorial topics of the scripture. This is not it. <laughs> this is not it. Um. And thank goodness, you know, at least on Pagani's channel, this doesn't have very many views or likes. Maybe people are starting to catch on to these guys. I believe that embracing such topics kind of helps define deliverance ministers mm. because we're able to just understand a little bit more beyond our modern yeah. evangelicalism of how things work. Yeah. I think sometimes modern evangelicalism, which is great, you know, um, um, I think it's, it's very limiting. Yes. So sometimes even when we begin to move in deliverance, we kind of move in deliverance mm -hmm. or, or how we even move in the kingdom, we end up moving yeah. controlled by that evangelicalism and we don't find ourselves moving in the fullest potential that we can, or at least our understanding yeah. in its fullest potential. So we're kind of like repeating regurgitated things that we've yes. heard, which some of it is good, but I think it's limited. It is it's limited. It's not as bad, it's just it's limited. Yeah. And, yeah, and not only that, but it's like when you go into de deliverance ministry, there is this, uh, I don't want to use the word esoteric, but like, right. like for example, I got footage, Evan's over my shoulder uh, running the camera angles right now. He doesn't want to use the word esoteric, but esoteric is what describes or mysticism, special knowing, Gnosticism, special Gnosticism. That's what they're big on, you know. And they call that liberty in the spirit or freedom. But it's not freedom in the spirit when you are contradicting scripture and letting your experiences contradict scripture.
he'll tell you, I got footage of me in Jamaica. Right. And this one woman comes up to me and she's like, nobody's been able to deliver me. I've been to all these ministries here in Jamaica, blah, blah, blah. And I've got chronic illness, physical issues. And I start praying for her. And again, you know, my famous Mike Signorelli deliverance quote is you don't get better at deliverance. You become more surrendered to the Holy Spirit. Right. So I'm like, okay, Holy Spirit, I'm relying on you because I know she needs deliverance. I just right. don't know what it is. Right. And on footage, I've got, I call out this crazy curse. I don't, but that's the thing is I took a risk. And you know, sometimes you do this, you're like, I'm gonna look real stupid if I heard wrong. But I called out this curse X amount of generations back. I don't know what it was, how many generations, I don't remember. Mm -hmm. And I said a word of an entity or a being or something I've never heard in my life. And I just said it immediately. She drops to the ground and starts receiving deliverance. This demon's manifesting wildly. Right. And I just think there's a measure of faith that deliverance ministers have to operate in it to be like, I'm in another country right. and I'm going to say the name of an entity I've never heard in my life and right. trust that it's real. Right. And that will get you canceled in a lot of evangelical circles. Totally. Why would you do that? I mean, if you did do that, why would you uh, believe it was real? Because we've got documented evidences of people who are manifesting and saying that demons have been delivered from from the same person from multiple people's um, deliverance sessions, like they're professional, <laughs> they're professionals at being delivered. They've appeared at Catherine Crick's events, getting delivered from demons, and then they're at Daniel Adams' events a week and two weeks later. So why wouldn't you just do what you do and just, you know, let the cards chips fall wherever they may? She may have been acting. Because they'll be like, you're crazy. And you're like, no, it's just, you know, we're willing to enter into a deeper realm. But you'll also have, uh, while it'll get you canceled in one sector of Christianity, it'll open up a whole other sector of people that have been saying, God has been showing me these things. I'm not crazy. Actually, I'm not the only one God has been speaking. Well, actually, you can get um, extra biblical activity. And 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, it talks about in in the last days, People will be given over to a strong delusion, okay, and that the 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 Antichrist is going to come with miraculous signs and wonders. So that door that it opens up to you, Mister Pagani, you might want to consider if that door is actually validating you or actually invalidating you. They got some weird. They got some weird litmus tests for whether they're doing right by the word or not speaking to about this and then it provides some level of comfort uh, even some level of accountability because Mm -hmm. if uh people who have ideas or thoughts on these secondary or outside topics if they don't if they're not able to filter it through an accountability team then then it does become error it becomes erroneous to others that's good they end up wait a minute that's good wow that's good like that was so deep so if you can get other people who are not sound in doctrine and departing from the truth to confirm your extra biblical revelation and extra biblical understanding, then you've got an accountability partner. You got, you got, you can always find an accountability partner among false teachers for your false teaching. You don't find that among people who rightly divide the word of truth. In error, but when you're able to share it and find a community of people that are like-minded, thinking, pondering the same things, then you can explore it together. This is the reason why false teachers don't cast out false teachers. Satan don't cast out Satan. They don't call each other out and then come off, uh, come out of it with a deeper understanding uh, collectively. Wow. And that way it'll, it'll, it'll start shaping the narrative of these group of people. But if they remain isolated, um, they will either think that they're crazy or they will end up in error. Mm. Um, and then they start teaching things that end up becoming, um, well, esoteric. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and like extra biblical and Gnostic. Yeah, extra biblical yeah. and Gnostic. And then they will end up um, shipwrecking their faith. Yeah. You know, and if wow. they become influential, then they, they're actually shaping a narrative and there's a group of people that will uphold to that. Which yeah. is why um, I think we need... So this is so convoluted. But if you basically follow what they just said it testifies against what they're doing it testifies against the things they're doing you will shipwreck your faith by deviating from scripture and starting to rely upon esoteric knowledge not revealed by god need and if you're watching and if you're content creator explore topics like this yeah you know there's a time to encourage the body of christ the time to do what you've been graced to do and it's time to explore topics like this and you're going to find you know that there's a community of people that have been thinking the same thing even ministers i get it yeah. all the time every time i do a school of deliverance in another church the moment i mention nephilim mm. the school goes in a whole different direction that even the pastor comes up to me and says can you just forget about this other stuff and just keep teaching that right now yeah and i just kind of keep going and we- so that is changing the message to suit the ears of people with itching ears People love to hear these stories about supernatural experiences. Think about all the people who have angels visiting them every day. They got angels in tents outside their house. They got angels in hammocks, you know, just chilling with a, you know, iced tea. I mean, they, they, 
and it's not even it's not happening it's coming from their deluded mind and people line up to listen to these stories these nonsense stories including stories of seeing Jesus when Jesus said you will not see me again and and in acts 1 when it talks about the one who ascended you will see him again he's going to come in the same way he left we just end up in this other place. Wow. And we find ourselves um, allowing the Holy Spirit to begin to reveal to us what uh, Deuteronomy, I believe, chapter 32 talks about, that the children of Israel begin to worship new gods. Right. I think, um, I was actually thinking about this yesterday, I think we need to move beyond Jezebel and Leviathan. Come on. We just have to move yeah, beyond that. They're not the only... Well, <laughs> Leviathan, as they teach it, is a false doctrine. I've done a video on Leviathan, read every place the word Leviathan appears in Scripture, and in no place in the scripture is it talking about it being a spirit. It's talking about it being a creature, an actual physical creature. These are false doctrines. Jezebel is another thing. You can talk about Jezebel's spirit. You can talk about personality traits that, it, that Jezebel had and why she had them. But this teaching of a Jezebel spirit, it's, it's not biblical. Now, there's a place in, so you could basically say false doctrine. False teaching follows a certain um, archetype or personality structure. Jesus does mention in the book of Revelation a prophetess named Jezebel who seduced the saints and who taught false doctrine. That's what Jeze Jezebel was religious, y'all, but she had false prophets. She had false teachers and they worshiped other gods. These people teaching false teachings. Mm, yeah. Yeah. You fit that archetype. You fit that personality type. You're not think. You're not believing that God's word is sufficient. Only once. Yes. I mean, obviously, we see that in Revelation chapter two. There's a premise for a present day spirit of Jezebel. Yes. Jesus said, "You allow that woman Jezebel to teach." So obviously, there's a spirit. Of it's not a spirit. It's it's a person. It's a person, a personality type. When you see someone who doesn't think the work of Christ is sufficient and complete. OK, when you find someone who doesn't think the word of God is sufficient, as, as it says, it, you know, study to show thyself approved, a workman who need not be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. And all scripture is God breathed and useful for correction, for rebuke, for training in righteousness, that the word of, that the man of God may be thoroughly equipped for every good work. But no, 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 you need to come to my deliverance school. You need to come to this school of the prophetic. You need to come to this and that. That's not what the Bible says. The Bible says you don't need, if it's a good work, if it's a kingdom work, you don't need anything beyond scripture. Jezebel, the teaching of Jezebel is a person that can be a Jezebel, you know, but then um, as. So would these individuals fit into the personality type of a Jezebel? Bingo. The abyss, going back to Genesis yeah. 1. Um, the waters yes. um, has um, a whole kingdom of animals that we have yet to discover yeah. or even know that they exist. Yeah. Then Houston, we've got a problem here. This is marine kingdom. Okay. Marine kingdoms are not biblical. Not at all. So you've, you've got python spirits. You've got octopus spirit, leviathan spirit. I've heard of a squid spirit. I mean, this is not in the word of God. This is literally what is talked about and refuted in the Bible. You're teaching as doctrine the imaginations of men. Obviously, that the kingdom of darkness is vast. Yes. So there is an innumerable amount of demonic entities that we have yet to be revealed to us. Yeah. You know, when we start to explore the whole idea of Nephilim and we don't need them revealed to us. If we needed them revealed to us, it would be in God's word not in your imagination. And just unclean spirit or, you know, or parallel it to right. uh, the abyss and unclean animals and stuff like that and animals that we are still discovering to this day. Yeah. The body of Christ should be doing that the way human civilization does it. Every year, mm. you know, um, yes. people, you know, discover new animals yes. and they make a list. Well, why isn't the church doing that? Yeah. So he wants new discoveries. He wants new revelation. He wants new Bible. He wants new Bible. That's what he's saying. They're They're wanting to um, write books. <laughs> They're wanting to hold training classes on things besides the Word of God. They're wanting people to do things. The Word of God doesn't 
call them to do or expect us to do. Whew, you, you could kill yourself. I mean, you could literally drop a fortune in all these classes these people have. And all these deliverance, the cost of deliverance. The cost of deliverance was paid for by Jesus Christ. Amen. You know what I'm saying, um, and I'm not talking about becoming demon conscious. Right. You're not talking about becoming demon conscious, but the Bible. Uh, no, <laughs> you are. I mean, that's. <laughs> that's that's all this is about, y'all. This is ninety percent of their appetite is, is is appealing to goats, not sheep, and it 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 exacerbates mental illness it exacerbates and takes people's focus off what the actual healing is that comes from jesus christ and from his word it says that the holy spirit will, will reveal the deep things of god yeah and reveal it to us. so if we keep ourselves open you'll find that the holy spirit will just show you a new category of the demonic yeah. or just things that happen in the spirit that the holy spirit will show you a new category of the demonic reveal to you the deep things of god so you've got a holy spirit that will contradict scripture you got a holy spirit that will add doctrine to scripture i mean if it's coming from the holy spirit it should be in the bible we should all be abiding by that you're claiming that your revelation is on par with the bible i mentioned that can open you up and then you can know how to navigate better yeah. in the spirit world as you administer the gospel and you won't find yourself using old wineskins yeah to right. try to minister that's not effective. Yeah, yeah, and I almost think from a strategic warfare standpoint, right. the devil is counting on us, right? Just echoing the oh, other. So and good. you know We're what I mean? He's counting on it. He's like, yeah, yeah, keep calling out Leviathan because then you're missing everything else. Come on, keep talking. calling out Jezebel. You're missing everything else. And I think that was actually what I appreciated back in the day. At least, like for example, P Apostle John Eckhart, he yes. was making an attempt to categorize and to list. And I remember that being like a very revolutionary thing. You know, in a late. It would be revolutionary thing. We don't need lists of demons' names. We don't. We don't need types of demonologies. If we need, <clears throat> if we needed him, God would have provided him. In nineties, early two thousands, mm -hmm. he was like trying to make an attempt to list and get that ca that cat catalog more diverse. Yes, you know, and I do think that we should be on that journey. Here is the thing: nobody is going to uh, dismiss the fact that there is categories of angels and there is a diversity of angelic beings. Right. We see it represented in Scripture, even the physical descriptions they have. Right. So, if Satan is an emulator, Come a on. copycat, you, what is the opposite? Mm. So, to me, there would be categories. There would be, you know, legion as a rank, military ranking. Come on. You know, so there's got to be this other uh, dimension of understanding to say, yeah, there is a diversity here. Well, the Book of Colossians uh, actually. There's got to be this other dimension of understanding. <laughs> uh. <laughs> what was the serpent doing with Eve in the garden? Wasn't he trying to get her to open herself up to another dimension of understanding? Wasn't he saying that God is keeping something from you. Didn't he say, did God really say to not go beyond what was written? Did he really say that if anyone adds to or takes from this book, that the plagues written in this book will be upon him? Did he really say that the secret things are God's things, but those things that are, are revealed? Not revealed by special revelation, but revealed in his word. Those things are for us. But there's special insight of understanding. Don't go for this, y'all. This is demonic grooming. Actually, you know, we like to use the category or the hierarchy of Ephesians 6, but right. Colossians 1 talks about dominions, yes. thrones. <laughs> you know, it goes into other categories as opposed to just uh, principality, power, rules right. of darkness, the spiritual wickedness in high places. Colossians goes a little step further. He's talking about thrones. Right. Well, these thrones were occupied by sons of God. Yes. And I think it all begins, you know, with the topic of the Nephilim. If a, if a believer can believe that the sons of God slept with the daughters of men, then they can open themselves up to allow the Holy Spirit to begin to reveal or at least... This man, this is cracked me up. This man claims he's sola scriptura. If you can believe this, then you should be able to open yourself up to believe this. That's not written in the word. That's how the, that's how they that's how you get groomed for doctrines of devils. Demonic grooming. Expand uh, the, the diversity of that category yeah. of the demonic. Yes. It all starts there. Okay, number one, um, 
if you believe in the story of Genesis chapter six, that and you hold them to be angels, yeah. not evil kings, right? You know, um, then the first thing that it lets you know is is that what you should hold it to is what is written. What is written? Anything beyond what is we should marvel and be in awe of what is written, but going beyond what is written, no. Nada. Zip. Zilch. There was more than one angelic rebellion. Yes. Okay, now this is Come good because now we're flowing. Yes. Okay, I'm going to throw a curveball and then I want to read <laughs> Genesis 6, 4 for everybody listening Come so on. that they know because some people are already drowning in deep waters. Right. Okay, watch. So Jesus... In You're drowning in deep waters. Mm. But these aren't holy waters, y'all. No, you shouldn't be drowning in this. No. And more than one angelic rebellion. I think that's the first time I've ever heard that ever said. And I'm a good listener. I'm a real good listener. In his return, there's a biblical, you know, account that he's going to walk through the East Gate Come in on. Jerusalem, right? Mm -hmm. So now we have Jesus who bodily ascends. Mm -hmm. There's something happening on some quantum level because, like you said, he's able to be seated at the right hand of the Father. Mm -hmm. Then upon Christ's return, he's going to walk through the East Gate, which you're getting ready to go to Israel. I'm right. going this October. There's some, something happening at some quantum level. Are we getting into quantum mysticism here? Ah, this is new age. This, this is this is some esoteric new age mumbo jumbo. You can have a conversation, and you are not you are not having it by the Holy Spirit. October, the East Gate is sealed. Yeah, I've so been he's, there. Yeah, he's going to walk I have through. A video, I recorded a video in front of the East Gate, and in front of the East Gate, there is a Muslim Islamic yes. cemetery that's there, yes. and it's right directly in front of the Mount of Olives. Yes, in which the which you know Muslims thought he there's no way their Messiah right. would walk through this. Right. Little did they know, it's like he's conquered death, hell, and the grave. Come he's on. walking right through it, but then he's going to somehow walk through a sealed gate. So there's something happening. So when you talk about angels, okay, this is a pastor. This is a pastor, and the resurrected Christ goes through to be in the room with the disciples when the door was locked. And he don't think that that resurrected body, because it's not, it's not the same as our body. It's not, it's not like a, a merely mortal body. That's not, we're not going to get mortal bodies when we're, when we're raised with him. The body I have to look forward to is a lot better than this body, y'all. And so goes it for you too, saints. But this man doesn't grasp this. This man doesn't grasp. This is like a big mystery to him. Wow. Sleeping with the with with the sons of men, then you have to think to yourself. I have to believe to some degree this is possible. Right. You know, you have the Holy Spirit overshadowing right. uh, Mary and conceiving right. Christ. Right. So we have a biblical basis. Well, we for... call we call that hybridization. Yes. The whole yes, idea yes, of yeah. hybrid is hybrid yeah. uh, even possible. Well, the only way, best way to explain that. Well, here he talks again, and here they're talking about. Did God merely use Mary's womb, which I believe is the immaculate conception? There was, you know, a human baby was birthed in Mary's womb, but God did not use Mary's egg to co-mingle, you know, <laughs> godliness with worldliness. I, I, I don't believe, the scripture most certainly doesn't say that, okay? So we we believe that a human baby was conceived of God, but not using the DNA of man, okay? Not by mortal means. It was a divine conception. They're trying to mingle the divine conception in with some kind of something I've never even heard before. Would be uh, Theoanthropos, which means the God man. He's 100% God. Yes. And he's also 100% man, yet yeah. uh, distinct from the Father, God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. But nevertheless, um, he is God man. Yeah. So in his spirit, he's Son of God, begotten of the Father. Then again, there's a mystery there. Jesus is God manifested in the flesh. Yeah. But nevertheless, he is uh, Son, the Bible calls it in Galatians, Son of uh, born of a woman, right. born under the law. So he's born under, so Jesus looked exactly like Mary. Right. He looked 100% yeah. like his mom. Okay. <laughs> So, in other words, for him to look, see what he's saying? He had to look like Mary because God used human DNA to conceive Christ. Is that scripture? I'm just saying. I mean, it, it, is, that what, is that what happened? I've never heard that's what happened. I've never heard that Mary's DNA was part of the conception of Christ.
Now, I might know all these terms he's using, like hybridization and something else he said. But I know the word of God. It doesn't say anything about the use of Mary's egg to fertilize it with the Holy Spirit. It just talks about the Holy Spirit overshadowed Mary and the baby was conceived. This is definitely adding to scripture here in these. And it's confusing something that doesn't need to be confused. You know, so Mary's blood flowed through Jesus' body and veins. So did, like I said, the nutrients the, from the food she ate. Those nutrients had to sustain the baby. The blood and the nutrients sustained the baby. But you would have do a DNA test on Christ and it would have had Mary's DNA? <clears throat> I don't know. I don't know. He is the son of David. It was, they, you know, through Joseph and through Mary... Um, this baby was born, but was human a DNA used at conception? Mm. Um, because the human part of him was coming from. So if you believe that story, the incarnation, yes. to be true, right. then you have to believe in hybridization. Yeah, so you, you see where I'm going. Yeah, come yeah on. we're flowing right now. This come is, on. People are probably, this is riveting. Right. Because we're in the same room. I come feel on. this flowing. Okay, so. <laughs> I think it's riveting, in a, and I don't think it's riveting in a good way. I know they're enjoying this. They're getting off on this. But I don't think this is something that you should get off on. I mean, because, I mean, I don't want to go down every rabbit trail, tre ch um, chasing every every word, every word I've never heard before, like hybridization. Um, or, you know, but that's what they're that's what they're leading people to do. If they if they chase this to its full context, you know, you'll be exploring things that are really outside the Bible really outside the Bible. God, Jesus was fully human and fully God. Okay. These other things about, he looked just like Mary. Um, he would have had to come from Mary's egg to look just, we don't know. We just don't know. And I'm glad we don't know. And I don't need to know. We have a thing from being in the military. Um, we work on a need to know basis and you don't need to know. That's how I think God, God's word clearly reveals some things we don't need to know. We just don't need to know. Well, this has gone on long enough. This video is about um, another hour and 10 minutes. Whew, and I'm not certainly not doing that. I think and hope this is enough to see that these guys, these guys are groomers, groomers for what I call doctrines of devils. This is the way you get led astray. Let me bring up a scripture here. I think this warning in Hebrews chapter one would definitely be of great effect on what these guys are doing. It's a warning against neglecting salvation. The word of God says that faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God, the word of God, not the speculation of, of our human carnal imaginations running wild with us. But it says here in Hebrews 2, 1, it says, therefore we must pay much closer attention to what we have heard, the known and revealed word of God, lest we drift away from it. We can easily drift away from sound doctrine by departing from it to seducing spirits and doctrines of devils. For since the message declared by angels proved to be reliable and every transgression or disobedience received a just retribution. How shall we escape if we neglect such a great salvation? It was declared at first by the Lord and it was attested to us by those who heard while God also bore witness by signs and wonders and various miracles and by the gifts of the Holy Spirit distributed according to his will. So this is um, bringing this to a conclusion is Brother Rob Wilson. This type of conversation, uh, remember, you know, is the, the only thing that it can do is lead people astray because it's a, a huge swerve out of sound doctrine and into our own human imagination and trying to use human logic and human philosophy 
to figure out things that are best left um, undecided, y'all. You know, leave it in God's hands. But there's enough clearly revealed scripture to work with. For a thousand lifetimes, you could plumb the depths of scripture and still have not learned everything there is to learn and applied everything there is to apply. Grace, peace, and love in Jesus' name. Amen.